Hello, friends. Thanks for joining me. Well, fall is in the air, at least here in Canada. And in honor of that, today I'll be showing you this fall meadow inspired piece. I'll be working on a 12 inch by 24 inch canvas. The palette will be completely metallics for today's painting. And the technique will be a variation on a Dutch pour combined with some balloon smashes. Mixing ratios are in the video description, and let's get started. First up, I'm going to lay down a base over about the top two-thirds of the canvas with my iridescent white. I'm spreading with a hair dryer, as I do for most techniques. Again, later on, we're going to be doing balloon mashes in the top third of the canvas. So I want to make sure that there's not too much paint left up there in the end. So the hair dryer is a great choice for spreading out your paint. Giving the sides a quick coat. In the bottom third, where you haven't put any paint yet, Start laying down some thick bands of each of your colors. I'm starting with silver. Now I'm adding some gold, sort of working horizontally across the canvas so that you get some of each color in all parts of the painting. Copper. Bronze. I'm placing the colors somewhat randomly, but I'm also trying to keep the amount of each color fairly balanced. Once you've got down a few bands of each color, just keep sort of filling up the holes that are left here and there with different colors until you've got most of the surface area in the bottom third filled in. Now I'm adding some more white above the colors, just like you would for a regular Dutch pour that I'm gonna blow down over top of them. Before I do that, I'm gonna add just a little bit of iridescent black, just little drops here and there. Again, this color very easily takes over the other metallics, so not too much. All right, now I'm gonna blow the white down over the colors I'm starting with my hair dryer on low, although I should mention that this paint mixture is a little thicker than what I would use for a normal Dutch pour. And I've done that intentionally because I want to be able to do the balloon mashes later on. So whereas I would usually do a Dutch pour with my hair dryer completely on low, uh, I'm going to be turning my hair dryer up to high for this painting to be able to move this paint, which is a little bit thicker than what you would normally use. Once you've blown the white just over the surface of the colors, and be careful not to blow it too much, turn your hair dryer up to high, and starting from high above the canvas, move the hair dryer down slowly towards the surface of the canvas, and start to push that paint up towards the top of the canvas. Now normally in a Dutch pour, I wouldn't blow my paint out as much as I'm going to do today. For this, rather than having my blowout look like those rounded sort of petal shapes that you usually get with a Dutch pour. I want it to look like sort of dried grasses, a more um, sort of stringy look on the ends. So to do that, I've gone in and I've really blown the paint up as far as it would go on the surface of the canvas. And now I'm going to use at first my finger and then a palette knife to shape the top of the blowout to look more like blades of grass than the rounded flower petals that you would normally see with a Dutch pour. I'm patting my finger into the paint and drawing it upwards to sort of mimic the look of blades of, of grass. With 
with my palette knife, I'm going to create the look of some thinner, finer blades of grass. So I'm going to take the palette knife and just drawing it upwards and downwards through the top of the blowout, create some delicate, wispy lines. Now I'm going to take a moment and touch up my sides on the bottom third before the paint starts to dry and just draw the paint down from the surface. You can also pick up some paint that's fallen onto the table and use that to fill in any empty spots along your edges. So continue working away, getting your grass to look the way you like it. I'm deciding at this point that I'm not liking the look of the spot right in the center. So I'm going to grab a little paper towel. This is something you can do if there's any parts you don't like. And just pick up that whatever section you're not liking the look of. And then Add a little bit of white, your base color, back in to fill up that spot where you've wiped up some of the paint. And just taking my palette knife and spreading it in to cover any bare canvas. You'll also notice that I'm wiping my palette knife often on a paper towel. You want to do that to keep your colors from getting muddy. So I never take more than a few swipes without wiping off my palette knife. Okay, so I'm just about finished up with the bottom half of my canvas and now we're ready to move on to the balloon mashes. So again I start with my base color, making a little circle and then adding lines across the surface of that circle with each of my other colors. I don't like my balloon smashes to look perfectly round. I like them to have more of an organic, natural flower shape. And starting with some of your base color down before you do your balloon dip is going to help your shape look a little less perfectly round and a lot more natural looking. Now I'm also not waiting for this paint to get any drier before I do my balloon smashes. You may have seen some people wait for the background paint to dry a little bit before they start. I don't like to do that. I like to just start working on it straight away. Um, it may not pick up all of the paint you want it to pick up the first time you mash down. That's okay. Just dip back in and try it again. Here I've gone down and the color was a little too round and a little too deep for what I wanted so I just wiped my balloon this is a water balloon by the way I've just taken a regular balloon and filled it not very full with water I like the look that a water balloon gives for the balloon mashes more than a balloon filled with air it also gives you a smaller surface to work with which was good for this painting so yeah if you get too much paint down just wipe your balloon and dip it down onto the surface of the flower you've created and that'll pick some of that paint back up. And I just continue in this manner, working back and forth until I'm happy with the look of the flowers that I get. I find when you do the flowers in this way, you can get some flowers that look like they're facing in different directions, some flowers that look like maybe they have some petals falling off, which is perfect for a fall scene. And I keep dipping into my same puddle beside my canvas, just adding paint now and then whenever necessary. You'll probably notice my hand hovering around a bit. I'm just thinking about placement as I'm working. 
you want to have your flowers not looking too evenly spaced or too uniform or else it won't give you a natural look. So just bear in mind while you're painting, trying to think about having an organic, natural looking kind of placement, different sizes, shapes and colors of flowers. You can also use your finger to pick up a little bit of paint around the outside edges of the can uh, the flowers, sorry, if they're looking um, a little bit too round or too perfect. For the last step, I make the stems of the flowers. So to do this, I use a little piece of ball chain. I dip it into the puddle of paint that I have, my leftover paint, at the side of the canvas. And I drop it down into the surface of the paint just below where the flower starts. I'm not actually touching the flower. There's a, there's a tiny bit of space in between there. And then just dragging it down towards the top of the grasses and letting it just sort of uh, drift off and disappear before it reaches the top of the blowout. Okay, and we're finished. Let's go in for a close-up so we can see those beautiful metallics. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed painting with me today. And if you did, please like, subscribe, share, follow. All these things help us small creators to keep being able to bring you these tutorials. Take care, and I hope you join me next week.